So I didn't watch the live broadcast of the Gun Collective's roundtable because I thought I knew what it was going to be about. I kind of wish I would have. But then all of a sudden I started getting this video popping up in my suggested videos by Yankee Marshall. I've never watched any of his videos. I don't know why it popped up. I'm assuming it has to do something with YouTube's divide and conquer plan. You know, split up the gun community plus take away their money and get rid of them. Because I expected to see, you know, number one, introductions. Number two, firearms prep pep rally. Like, what's going on with the Shush, Shush Act, how we can support it. You know, so on and so forth. Uh, number three. After that, then, you know, let's talk about what had happened in Vegas and how we can best combat the anti-gun people. Strategies you can use, stuff like that. Number four. How smaller YouTube channels can still make money because we're not allowed to do affiliate programs. If you do, like, with Amazon or something, as soon as they find out you're a gun channel, they'll cut off your affiliate program. They've been currently demonetizing, like, Every single video, closing thoughts, how we should move forward in the future, how smaller gun shops can support their community, and then, you know, everyone subscribe to our channel and vote for Adam. Well, uh, I wind up watching the Yankee Marshall video and... The RA, the gun collective, veteran eight, and... Obviously, he was pretty butthurt that he wasn't in the gun collective's little thing, and... That he got banned from the comments, and you know, it is what it is. But it actually just turned into a round table circle jerk. But he made a lot of very good points. And then when I went and watched the video, I'm like, okay, you know, it's starting off pretty strong. Mac gets on there, I'm really standing behind him. And this next guy gets on there in a blue sweater, and he says, It absolutely me off to no end to hear people say, I want to have a conversation, and then turn around. And the next sentence out of their mouth is, thou shall not infringe. Where have I heard that before? Here for blocking, or at least for a conversation. Holy crap. So what category of weapons so should not be in the public market? <laughs> so we ought to start from a premise that these weapons, which are weapons of war, we shouldn't have these kind of weapons. I would agree with, I would agree with. Then he goes on to say, our sales went through the roof. I said, I didn't get into this industry for blood money. And if you're doing something that's against your morals, you are in fact collecting blood money for selling firearms. See, when I sell a firearm or get a new shooter into the sport, I look at it as a wall standing between people trying to take away our freedoms. Every single gun that I sell, Every new shooter I get into the sport is just one more defense against losing our rights. And yet, there are movies where, geez, you can't even count how many people die in them. We have video games where, where, where we glorify murder. Video games, really? I mean, aren't we just talking about blaming things on inanimate objects as stupid? You can't blame violence on video games. Honestly, video games are helping the shooting and sport out so much. Same with YouTube channels and good movies. Maybe you weren't alive in the 90s, which you look like you were, but... If you weren't, let me just fill you in. We were backed into a corner and rapidly losing our gun rights. Talking about firearms at all, you were labeled as a psychopath. You were clearly explained that, you know, they're only for movies. As a matter of fact, I was actually brought in front of my 8th grade class and the teacher called on people to have a go at me how firearms were stupid and I was wasting my time. Then the whole thing just kind of unravels. It goes from, hey, how can we help each other, to what's a reasonable gun law, which there is no such thing as a reasonable gun law. Conversation, what conversation are we hoping to have? What are we talking about? Or are we saying that there is no conversation? I mean, Tim says there is no conversation. But when Nancy Pelosi comes out and says there's not a law that can be passed that would have changed the outcome, what conversation is there to have? It's an emotional-based yeah. argument. I cannot... I agree. Logic and emotion aren't compatible. Don't think by giving up, you know, just this one little novelty, this accessory, this stock that allows you to shoot faster, which you can do anyways with or without it, that it's going to change. It's just one more thing, one more step, one more law... It, it, that's all it is. They're just nipping away. You ever hear that joke? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I mean, would I have a problem if bump power stocks were put on a 4473 or something along those lines? You had to go through a NYX check or whatever yes, the case is. I would. I mean, whatever. If if that's what has to be done to, to please the crowd. My stance, as far as gun laws go, nothing's acceptable. 
Nothing at all. No laws. We should not be infringed upon at all. As far as grenades and rocket launchers and stuff like that, you know what? If you have the money and you're at a designated rocket launcher range, by all means, you can buy a rocket launcher, you can shoot that thing off into the hillside. Where does it say a handgun is protected? No, gun. We should, every it doesn't citizen say gun. It says arms. arms. What is arms? It could be a nuclear not, weapon. Not the, that's right. It could be a nuclear weapon. You, do you think you should have the right to have weapons grade we, plutonium here in the We on should the farm? be able to have should anything. You have weapons? Should you have weapons grade plutonium? Well, what about nuclear weapons and jets and battleships? It takes a team of people to run that anyway. So even if you could afford to buy that, you couldn't do anything with it. You can't do it by yourself. And you literally need a military a command structure to be able to effectively use that. So I think that's an invalid argument. Now this is my moral compass on laws and stuff like that. It goes like this. If you're forcing an idea on someone, whether that's religion, guns right, you know, speech, whatever, that's when it's not okay. If you're telling me that because you don't like something, I can't have it, for example, firearms, or you're in a hotel room and you decide that those people down there shouldn't be alive, that's forcing your ideas onto those people. On by turning off the comments on that on, on some of these pages. Wow, are you really that disconnected from your customers to think that what you're saying would be okay? Of course there's going to be negative comments. And that's something you deal with when you're actually communicating with customers. And if somehow this video actually does make it to the Gun Collective and they watch this, please keep doing the live streams. I think they're really productive. But you need to put together an itinerary of what needs to be talked about. If you want, you can contact me. I'll put one together for you. Make this video a lot more positive. And I'm not going to lie, I wasn't subscribed to Mr. Guns and Gear, but not for reasons you think. It's just that he's bald and I'm going bald, so it's like having your future just shoved right in your face. But I'm definitely subscribed now. Same to Max channel. I think you guys should also sub subscribe and support them. They seem to be doing really positive things. Also, leave in the comments below what you think should have been talked about in that video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.